so for the build quality the macbook pro m1 2020 is equipped with an aluminium chassis with a kind of depth unlike the air it has a cooling system inside cnc milled aluminum i think that's excellent in terms of build quality that's premium as far as standards go and it's excellent yeah there is literally nothing to complain about as far as the build quality is concerned for io this is where things get a bit more complicated all you have two thunderbolt 3 slash usb 4 ports that support power delivery display ports basically almost every tech that's out there but then just two thunderbolt type c that's it yeah basically if you're like me you're going to need to buy a dongle yeah so live with this yeah i think dongles work quite all right so yeah dongles can give you hdmi and almost every port you're looking for even sd card support so go for that did i mention the feel where you open it with one hand is just unbeatable like it's one of the best one-handed opening laptops ever <music> The keyboard also is one of the best state-of-the-art magic keyboard here. Yeah. It's next after the butterfly keyboard that was inferior. So this keyboard has absolutely zero complaints. Even Windows users that I know, each time they used my Mac, they always were like, I'm going to get a Mac, if not for anything, for the keyboard and the trackpad. So yeah, you can see how I type with it. It's stunning. Perfect actuation points. Like, each time you click any part of the key, it presses the letter without breaking a sweat. Yeah, exactly what we need in a keyboard. The trackpad on a MacBook is one of the few parts of a MacBook that can never go wrong. Apple is known for having the best record when it comes to trackpads, and even the 16 inch MacBook Pro has an even bigger trackpad than this that already looks big as hell. And this trackpad is bigger than that of the 13 inch MacBook Airs. Yeah, so if trackpad is like a major concern for you, like trackpad size, you might want to get the Pros. Although the S trackpad is still big enough relative to most Windows devices. Now we also have something called the touch bar. Yeah, it's exclusive to the Pros. That's the 13 inch M1 Pro and 13 inch M2 Pro. Yeah, so it lets you access functions like brightness sliders media playback sliders emojis even an incoming call shows there it has an oled display is lovely to look at it lets you assess like quick web options when you're using apps that support the touch bar and it's definitely one of the best things ever on a mac and you can assess the function run also where you hold the fn key yeah you might want to make sure that doesn't get spot or you'll be in big trouble though Sixteen by ten, twenty-five sixty by sixteen hundred display at two hundred and twenty-seven pixels per inch. What could possibly go wrong? I don't think anything can do. Thirteen point three inches, hundred percent sRGB and hundred percent P three color gamut. Yeah, Apple has one of the best displays out there, and this one is five hundred nits. It's not as bright as the market share of 1600 nits mini leds but it's ips though and it's still not bad yeah it can hold its own pretty well by the way it's slightly brighter than that of the macbook air so you might want to take note of that If I'm going to be honest about the speakers on the Pro by the left and the A on the right, I would say they are pretty similar hardware. Although I would prefer the Pro because the chassis is deeper and then it allows a kind of bouncing audio, like you feel it bouncing inside the chassis before coming out. 
that aluminium bounce just gives it the richness it needs to beat the air. As we have it, both laptops on the left and the right are equipped with Apple's M1 8 core CPU at 3.2 GHz. Yeah, 4 performance cores and 4 efficiency cores. And I think it has even a good stand in 2023 or 2024. Yeah, this is when Apple started the whole Apple Silicon ARM CPU line. And these are the Geekbench 6 cores. You can see very marginal differences. 2365, 2351, very close. It's 559 and it's 445 on the multi core. Also very close. Yeah. The Pro will have the edge in performance due to its thermal design. Yeah. That the air doesn't have a fan. Yeah. It's time to answer the original initial question Is it worth buying? Is the M1 Pro 13 inch of 2020 worth buying? Absolutely. But then. It's not even on Apple's website anymore. This is Amazon. On Amazon, you can get it for like $895. Let's just say basically $900. Yeah. And I know Apple sells the M1 Air 256 8GB RAM for $1,000 on their website officially. So I would say go for this rather than going for that. Yeah. But I'll still see if you can find an M1 Air on the same Amazon for about $700 and something. dollars. Go for it. Yeah. Because very minor differences yeah the thermal design is good but like most mac users i know particular students don't really put their laptops in that like thermal load that's going to require that fan to like blow up and you know the whole stuff like that yeah so i think this basically summarizes like the whole video about the m1 macbook pro 13 inch and thanks for watching